What's up everybody? It's uh, Andy's Automotive here, or uh, Nash Racing Automotive, whatever you want to call me. Uh, thanks for watching, if you're watching. Uh, just a couple things, here's the 2015 Dodge Journey. Sorry about the camera angle. 2015 Dodge Journey, uh, we're gonna look at replacing the battery. Uh, of course, you know, one of Dodge's more stupid designs. The battery's not up here. There's your jump ports, you know, you got positive and you got ground, of course. But where's the battery? The battery is under here. This is the left side or driver's side wheel well. And we are going to modify slightly the battery to take this 75 group with these side terminals. Hopefully I'll be able to, uh, you know, get them in there with the room. Hopefully I'll be able to tighten them down on the back side. Got the side post terminal adapter uh, retrofitting kit here. Two bucks at Walmart. Battery was only 50 bucks. We're just trying to get this journey by until just another year. Just so we can get rid of it. Um, so one more thing before I start. Now I've probably mentioned a couple of other things on some of my other videos about tune-ups and things like that. My favorite chemical of all time. Barry Man's B12 Chem Toll Cleaner. So this comes in a spray form also. This is the one that you add to the tank and or I use it to run through my vacuum lines for an injection cleaning or a you know, fuel induction cleaning rather than fuel injector. Um, so I'll put half in the gas tank, let it run through the fuel system mixed with one tank or fill up the tank with premium fuel. That's what I do, make it burn a little cleaner. Um, and then like I said, I do the other half through a, uh, basically a dialysis machine for the engine. And that takes care of that. That helps my lawnmower stay healthy too. Also, denatured alcohol, love it. I also put this in uh, cars that have been sitting for a while. Helps kind of absorb, uh, you know, any moisture or things like that. But it also burns really, really, really clean. So when it's emission time, it's not going to hurt to uh, drop a little bit of that in there with your uh, with your gas. So first of all, we're going to come over here, get your wheel. Got these 19s on it. Worst thing Dodge could have done for people who like to be money conscious. This is my mother's vehicle. And every time I turn around, I got to put tires on this thing for her because they're worn out. So we're going to jack this baby up. Excuse my super messy garage. I do not have time for this. You know, I just built me a shed. So hopefully I'll get some, you know, stuff cleaned up. Sorry for the moving camera. But I don't have a cameraman. Hopefully everybody's doing good today. It's in Georgia over here. It's nice and rainy. Um, E-brake is on. Let's show the 19 inch wheel. Uh, so I've already broke loose the studs. Forgive the noise. I'm gonna put this down. And then I'll relocate to the other side. All right. Like I said, I already broke the lugs loose. I'm just using my quick impact here to uh, get them off. Rest of the way. Oh. Tires already worn out. Half tread left. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. All right, here we go. Let's turn the headlight on. Oh, beautiful. Oh, what a piece of junk. So dikes. You know, little mini dikes. You got a little flat jaw there on the side, but it works really well. Let's see if I get a good angle on this for these uh, clips here. Where am I? Okay, you can see. So, uh, larger ones work a little better. There is a special tool for this. Like I said, you just pop this baby out. If you can't get them with that, you can go to the... Sorry if I blinded the camera, folks. You get your little flathead screwdriver, and you can get that lodged under these guys. Some vehicles will be a pain in the butt. And I say that because I've dealt with many. If it don't come out, that's all right. Because we're gonna come back with needle nose pliers. And scoop the rest. These clips do break very often. Um, shout out to my people who are probably thinking to themselves, why don't he have safety glasses on? Because all that dirt flying around that he's popping out of those clips. You're right. I don't have gloves or glasses on. Um, I do like to be safe. I am very, I'm squinting right now. <laughs> Not that that'll save my eyes, but it will definitely help if some dirt decides to pop out. And it just rained over here, so this is not any easier than what it should be. 
like I said, needle nose. We're gonna get in here, clip these up. These clips you can buy at the dealership, or if you can get the part number for them, you can uh, you can get them online. See, once you got the head off, you know, popping them out ain't no big deal. Almost there. I mean, we could have just cut them off, you know, but zip tying all this back together is not quite as effective as these clips. So, let's uh, try to have some dignity while we're doing a repair. But for the ones that don't work, if you have enough hardware, nuts and bolts and things like that, yeah, this one's going to be a problem. You know, like I said, there is a, a tool for this. It is a special clip tool. You can buy it from a dealer, you can buy it online. Um, like I said, I'm terribly sorry about breaking you folks. All right, and as you see, I got one more. Jesus Christ, allergies. <coughs> God dang. There is your battery up there, and it is facing this direction, so we're gonna find out what's uh, what's going on in there. All right. I said, I got, I got one more clip here. I missed one. Like I said, it's all dirty and rainy. Kinda missed it. There we go. Back out of the way. Now, if you choose, you get the rest of this out of the way. Uh, best thing for that is going to be a, a bungee cord. I'll be right back. Sorry guys, I'm back. All right, got a little bungee here. This is the worst possible thing you glove companies need to fix. And these are, these are good gloves too. But every once in a while you get that one glove that just try to put it on, and whoop, it rips off. All right, we're eight minutes in. Let's see if we can get this going a little quicker. I'm gonna lose this top rod. Past the spring. Loop back up on the spring. Boom. There you go, out of the way. Alright, WD 40 coming handy here, but we're just gonna go ahead and break this thing loose. It's a uh, 13 millimeter. Uh, half inch may or may not work depending on what ratchet wrench or maybe a spawn drive socket. So Bought this baby off here. Like I said, WD-40 help loosen this up. Um, yeah, it's definitely 13. You got a bunch of flex head ratchet wrenches that'll make this a lot easier. Uh, and if you need to know how to take off your front bumper, you got a bracket right here, right there. So you get the upper fender and bumper disconnected. So we get this battery bracket out. Hey, there's there's probably a, two pounds of crap down here holding this battery in. Bunch of dirt down here, rocks. Hopefully I don't run out of time. WD-40 probably to help this be a lot easier uh, 
Um, sensor here mounted on top of the battery. I don't believe that's anything other than sensor for something special. It's not the cables. Alright. Positive is on left, negative is on the right. So your aft um, right side is gonna be your positive. There so you can see that. Alright, see so you guys see that up in there? Oh, it's a crap video, I'm sorry. You gotta work with what you got, right? Positive, negative. Like I said, there's this little sensor here. You just unplug that baby. Looks like it's gonna be a 10 millimeter on top of these uh, posts here. It should be an easy adaptation. Sockets work best, of course. I do enjoy my ratchet wrenches. Let's see if I can. Now this, uh, somewhere right here. That'll do temporarily. Right. Now you always want to do negative first so you get the system to short itself properly without accidentally regrounding once you're detached. Like I said, ratchet wrenches are the greatest thing ever made. Forgive me if my wife comes home screaming at me for not answering the phone because I'm making this video. It'll probably happen in the next few minutes. For seconds, I do hear a car. Like we her. Good job, Dodge. You made another terrible, terrible time. Let's do this. Come back. Right. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect that positive. Hold that up there on the way. That's crap on the way. Sorry folks, I'm probably running out of time on my video. Went ahead and got a 3H ratchet. It's just being a little pain in the butt right here. All right, terminal should be loose. Come back with your screwdriver. Do not pry on that sensor. Pry specifically on the terminal. Just needed to get it broke loose and separated. See that there? I don't know what sensor specifically this is. Maybe a voltage monitor. Uh, made in Hungary. That's German. That's cool. Dying with a price of product, though. Any hooser. 
I take your wire brush drill. I love this guy. It's gonna real quick. Hit the bottom. Top. And to the positive. All right. And again, that's a cylinder wire brush. My favorite thing on a small 12 volt drill. Cleans up stuff very nicely. The bracket's gonna be a pain in the butt. Let's go and get up here. Negative. No, the two cables, if they do touch each other with the battery is not connected. Nope, that should not cause any issues. This does come out. That was that raw, you see all that dirt crap. Let's pull this battery out of here. Make this. Alright. 525 amps. It does not specify cold cranking. It does, I'm sorry. 525 cold cranking amps on your OEM battery. Do not pry vents. Whatever, we know that. Look at all this crap in here, man. Look at all that dirt, man. Look at this. Look at this. That's just piled up in there. Wonderful design, Dodge. Wonderful design. Yes, I am being extremely sarcastic. Walk around my messy garage and find us a microfiber towel, huh? There's one. That one's, that one's dryish. It'll work. We just want to. Sorry about the lighting. I'm sorry, guys. This video is not my best. It's pretty crap. I'm going to wipe all this junk out of here. I blow my garage out daily. It is a removable battery tray, I see now. So, you can. Uh, let's see. Get this. Here's your, here's your top mount bracket. You could probably customize a better design than that because that thing is extremely bulky. Uh, it's plastic tray. Come to daddy. Yep. Tray comes out. All this crap on the ground now. All right. If you got tire it's dry and you got a vacuum cleaner, I definitely recommend that. I'm gonna tell you it's extremely dirty battery box here. It's raining outside, that's awesome. Not. Rain is my least favorite precipitation. I do enjoy turn this light off and stop blinding you guys. I do enjoy some snow. Put hose down. Get that baby clean. No, I'm not gonna paint it or anything. I should, but I'm not. I just wanna get this battery in here, get this baby rolling. So note to note to yourself, don't leave on your um automatic running lights. Don't sit in your car with the car off, playing on your phone with it hooked up to the charger. It will die. It may not happen the first time or so that you do it, but I promise you, your car will die. The battery will drain itself, and you will not have anything left to start it with. Also, I'm gonna make a video for you guys, uh, hopefully a better one with somebody. I need a donor car, a Toyota Yaris 1.5 liter. With air conditioning, or any of you, I will post a link to the bottom of this video for the Toyota Yaris uh, Corolla and Echo 1.5 liter with air conditioning. I designed a bracket to stop the chirping and squeaking that Toyota has never ever fixed. They will charge you for labor, a new belt, and put it on and just simply tighten it back up. A couple months later, it's gonna be doing the same thing. I've designed this bracket and I've put it on several cars already. Um, one girl, she's driving back and forth to North Carolina, Georgia. So far, no chirps, and it's been on there for a month now. And guess what? That's awesome because I'm only charging you 16 bucks for the bracket. Um, it's on eBay, 15.99 plus shipping, it's like five bucks. Uh, go on there, get it. I'm gonna put the link on this uh, deal here. If you got anybody with a Toyota Corolla, 
the RS Echo from I believe it's 2000, 2001 up to 2008, 9, 10, somewhere that range, depending on the 1.5 liter engine. It may work with the non air conditioning systems, but if your belt is only tensioned by the alternator specifically with the one bracket that comes from the side of the head over, this bracket is for you. And I will post the link down in the description. You can follow us through the eBay page and check it out. Appreciate that. Here's your pretty clean uh, setup now. I'm gonna pop this baby back in here. I'm gonna turn my headlight. I'll put it on dim light. That way it's not killing you guys. Uh, boom. All right, here's the thing. Check this out. Remember, your positive is on. Let's do the positive is on your left, negative is on your right. Boom. Positive on the left, negative on the right. And again, that's positive, negative. You got your converter kit. I didn't notice this while ago, but luckily the thread pattern. See that plus? That is for the positive, of course. All right. So thread that baby in there a little bit. And negative. Negative. Now this battery is one of those good old Walmart one years. It is um, strictly, like I said, to get this car by. However, the cold cranking amps is actually 25 higher than the OEM battery 86 group. Like I said, 86 group is your stalker. Um, need to grab me some. Looks like a 7 8 wrench. Hold on. We want a stronger battery. Why would we put a weak battery if we can get a stronger battery? They can do the same thing. Because a battery's not really going to make any difference on most cars, especially older models, unless it's something like a BMW that requires a very high cranking amp. Um, you know, we're just going to use pliers and tighten this baby down. My, my garage is a mess. I'm working on several cars this week. I haven't had time to organize. Like I said, BMW is going to be your most specific battery, uh, along with Mercedes and Cadillacs. Um, do not waste your time a lot of times on um, on trying to adjust the fluid and the battery, unless you know what you're doing. Distilled water works sometimes, otherwise you really want to get battery acid because once the cells are bad you can attempt to do cleaning procedures I've seen I tried it didn't work um, maybe the battery was casing was damaged or something um, it's an extremely long procedure to save a battery it's almost just better just to spend the money you know and, and get a new battery because if you can get a Walmart battery for 50 bucks and it'll last you a year but you're going to buy a $150 battery, a $140 battery from a parts store and get the same, unless the cranking amps are just way higher, you know, for starting. Like I put a, a very high cranking amp battery from Walmart in my little race car, my Mitsubishi Starion. I uh, put a giant HX35 turbo in there and a, a big cam and it's a lot more power to turn it over. Um, so I did that. I need a better starter also. Anyway, uh, point being... It's almost better just to spend the money getting a new battery because if it dies on you once, no big deal. Yump it off, get it jumped off, charge it up, whatever, get my test it. Once the alternator hits it again, probably be fine. But if it happens more than one time in a week or so, get a new battery. You're going to leave yourself stranded by trying to ease it along and ease it along and ease it along. And it's going to be a waste of your time because the battery's going to die in the most inopportune place that it could or when you've got to be somewhere or it's going to die. Nobody's going to be around to jump you off and then you're going to screw yourself. Don't do that. All right. Um, I don't know how much time I have left on this video. It's 24 minutes in. It'll probably give me a warning or just stop. So sorry if it does that, and then I'll make a part two. Um, but for now, we're gonna put this phone right back here and uh, see if we can wedge in. Oh, look at your heights on your battery. The height on the battery is the same. That is the biggest issue because 26R, or I'm sorry, not 26R, 26 series is the alternate to this uh, 86 series. Um, but you see that the 75 group is exactly the same size. Negative, negative, positive, positive. We lined up the exact same. Now the only issue is going to be whether or not I can get these to hang down on the side, which it looks like it's going to be a perfect, perfect fit. Um, cast the light in there. You see that? And uh, sensor-wise, we'll have to check on this. 
I may have to invert the terminal to get it to mount right, but as long as the terminal mounts on, it doesn't really matter which direction it faces, as long as you have juice flowing. And yes, I did get this battery pre-checked at Walmart to make sure the coal cranking apps is as high as it's supposed to be. Um, turn this light off. I thought I had the receipt for that. I do not. Or do I? Nope, I do not. Uh, anyway, it was uh, it was showing uh, 570 on the cold cranking apps, so power wise we're good. Uh, let's go ahead and pop this baby in, see if we can mount it up. Get the like, and the height matters because of the bracket. If the bracket does not fit on top of the battery like it's supposed to, that is an issue. So you can leave the strap on, um, and all in all, I mean, set the width. Everything is the same here. I don't. You know, there shouldn't be any issues, and you had plenty of threads sitting on top of the uh, bracket. So, if you need to take off this handle, you can. You go right here on the side. You pop a... Let me get my light on here. You get you a flathead under this. I'll just do it. God bless America. See, this is why you need a cameraman. A designated flipping cameraman. Alright? You take this right here. You go up through there. Boom. Out. Flip it around the other way. Wedge it up a little, get it past the first brick. Oh, it's stuck. Oh my god. No big deal. Boom. There you go. Done. We're converting this battery to good old Wally World. And uh, again, here's your uh, part number crap if you want it. It is a VP75, that means value power, that means cheap power, 75 series, 550 cold cranking apps, I'm sorry, yes, 550 cold cranking apps, and 685 total cranking apps at 32 degrees. What's the difference in a marine battery? Uh, MCA, marine cranking apps, I think you divide uh, or multiply by like .02 or something like that and get your, uh, get your values, you can look that up online. Um, I put a thousand MCA battery out of my car. Um, it is equivalent to 770 cold cranking amps in my little race car. And the marine batteries can take a lot more beating and it's turning over a much heavier load, you know, than the stock battery could do. I had to get rid of it because the stock battery could not handle it. So, like I said, we're gonna hook that back right there. Get some light on the situation. Again, sorry for the ter terrible video. Get these out of my way. And we can slide this battery in here effortlessly. All right, look how clean it is. Not to mention, guys, this is probably going to make this job a whole lot easier if you do convert it to something like this, because look at the look at the setup, man. Your terminals are here now. You don't have to like reach over and all this crap. Will it work? Yeah, sure. Oh, but why didn't the OEM come with a battery like that? Well, because they didn't. They wanted to make this as difficult as possible to get your personnel to go to the dealership to replace it okay that's why because they're not only going to charge you 150 200 for a battery that's oem spec they're going to charge you to install it and guess what it's in the wheel well guess how much that's going to be minimum of a hundred uh dollars in labor i highly doubt they'd only charge you half an hour because of the extra steps in here you know to do this so that's why I'm making this video. One year free replacement battery. If it gives you any issues, guess what? Go to Wally World and get rid of it. Like I said, we only need to get this thing by for a temporary amount of time. 75 group. Negative is on the right back side. Positive on the back left side or aft right, however you want to look at it. And I work at the airport, you know, in the hangar. So we use the word forward and aft a lot. So if you hear that, that's where I got it from. Um, it means front and back. That means that way people can't get confused. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of test fit this. And if I need to, you see that this is bolted, right? This is bolted together. Terrible, terrible. This is so difficult, I'm sorry. Right here, it's bolted on. So if I look at that, oh, and there's a nut there. How about it? If I need to flip this terminal, it's not gonna be a problem. Um, I'm at 29 minutes. I don't know how much more time I got. I'm trying to get this camera better. So it's gonna be ridiculous. Let's try this. There we go. Maybe it won't fall. All right, anyway. Is that gonna be a problem? Of course it is, because it's facing the opposite direction. So, will it fit? Yes, of course it will. Can I turn it around? Yes, of course I can. Look at that. 
We'll get that baby pried up a little bit. Now here's your issue. Is this sensor gonna mount on this side? Absolutely not. Not a chance. Now we can find the routing for it, but I can feel the body harness that it's on and it's right there, so we're not gonna get close. So we will definitely end up flipping this terminal around. And like I said, worst case, I can just do it this way. And open up this. Here. Basically, you can just force something in there that's a lot bigger, or you can get a screwdriver and wedge it. There we go. Nice little wedge action. But oh my god, how am I gonna tighten it? You're right. How are you gonna tighten it? Oh my god, it's just so difficult. I just let the dealer do it. I give up. Well, if you want to say that, then whatever. You don't want to be a mechanic anyway. It's like a self-cap bolt. That's pretty neat. Can't lose the nut. Or the thread you're just built up. No worry. That's pinned in. Okay. Let's address the situation here. So is this constant power sensor. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. So we see that this bolt looks like it could flip and we need to flip it but you know what we're not going to do that what we are going to do is rotate this in a different direction slightly that way i can mount this without having to worry about killing my sensor or i'm just going to put it on here but i need to tighten this first so here's my wife guys, so we're going to make a part two of this, but I'm going to get this worked out and you'll see it in part two. Copy that. Have a good day. Peace.